it. Uh, our subject this morning, how are you doing? How are you doing? Once more, how are you doing? Yeah, it is a question that is asked and answered um, each and every day. How are you doing? Uh, we've experienced that, haven't we? Uh, people ask us, uh, you know, when, when we go and, and when we come, how are you doing today? And I know that you've asked the same question, have you not? You've asked them about how are you doing? How, how are you doing today? And the reason we ask that is because we want to know. We want to know uh, if all is well with the person. When we say, how are you doing? We want to know if everything is okay. Uh, it is a way that we greet one another. Um, how are you doing? Many times uh, the responses will vary. Sometimes we say, well, I'm fine. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, then the other times we say, and I've heard it frequently said here, uh, I'm blessed and highly favored. That's what we say. I'm blessed and highly favored. Somebody else says, well, you know, I'm hanging in there. How, how are you doing? I'm, I'm hanging in there. And somebody else says, well, I won't complain because if I did, it wouldn't do any good anyway. Amen. In our text this morning, the Apostle Paul wanted to return to each city where he had preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he wanted to see how the believers were doing. Those new converts, those people who, uh, who had been converted to Christianity. He wanted to know how they were doing. He wanted to know if they were continuing in the faith. He wanted to know if they were growing spiritually or if they were in a standstill in their lives. Well, what about us today? What about us? What about you? What about you? How are you doing this morning? Uh, uh, that is spiritually speaking. How are you doing this morning? Uh, do you ever think about your spiritual condition? This is our first point this morning. Do you ever think about your spiritual condition? Do you ever take time, and I know that uh, we lead busy lives and, and we have busy schedules, uh, but do you ever take time to think about your spiritual condition? Many people never do. Many people never do. In fact, most people are consumed by their work. They're consumed with pleasure. They're consumed with money or politics and, and other pursuits. From one year to the next, 24-7, 365 days out of the year, we're consumed with the things of this world. Spiritual matters are almost never considered. Amen? What's on our minds most of the time has nothing to do with God or the things of God. I just want to preach this morning. I'm going to take my time. I'm, I want to encourage us. I want to encourage us because... Uh, the day of our Lord is soon to come and we need to make sure that we're ready uh, and that we're really ready and the church said amen. amen. Do you ever think about your spiritual condition? Do you ever think about your spiritual condition? Think about this. We were made by God and we're kept by God. We, uh, you know, there's no doubt about it. We were made by God and we're also kept by God. We're kept by God. You know, it is God who is keeping it together. You know, from time to time, we'll tell each other, we'll say, you need to get yourself together. You need to hold it together. You need to keep it together. The truth be told, none of us can really do that. If we're kept together at all, it is because of the goodness and the graces, grace of God. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who holds it together. Listen, if you've got it together this morning, it's because God is holding it together. And the church said amen. So we were made by God created by God, uh, kept by God, yet and still uh, we hardly ever think about God or the things of God or our spiritual condition. We live, many of us, as if though we will never meet God someday. Well, I've got news for you this morning. We will. Each and every one of us, we will meet God. Now, you may not ever meet the president, but you will meet God one day. You may not ever have a chance to meet the, uh, the governor of this, this state or, or, again, the president of the United States. You may not ever have the privilege to do that. But I can guarantee you, according to Scripture, that each and every one of us will have the opportunity. Amen. We will meet a righteous and just and holy God. 
Do you ever think about that? Do you ever think about uh, that? Do you ever think about your spiritual condition? Do you ever think about the fact that one day you're going to have to stand before again God? Paul did. He thought about it. In fact, he not only thought about it, but he wrote about it in the book of 2 Corinthians. The fifth chapter and verse 10, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, this is what the apostle Paul said. He says, for we must all, every one of us, for we must all appear before the judgment seat. I, I just want to know how you're doing. That's all. How, how are you doing spiritually? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Mm. I think it's time for us to think about and begin to consider our spiritual condition. For we must all appear before the judgment seat. No one's exempt. Nobody, not a one of us, is exempt. Doesn't matter what we do in life. Doesn't matter where we come from, what we have, or what we may not have. Does not matter where we live or where we don't live. Every one of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, and we'll give an account of uh, the things that we've done in our bodies. On last week, we made it very clear that only what we do for Christ will last. You remember that? Only what we do for Christ will last. So we all must appear and give an account. Knowing this then, knowing that uh, we must all appear before the judgment seat of God, this should motivate us to think about our spiritual condition. Uh, th knowing that one day I'm going to lay down. One day I will die. I'm going to leave here. And I know that we've gotten used to being here, and we've grown accustomed to being here, and we like being here, but the truth be told, this world is not our home. Uh, this is not the final stop for us. One day we're going to get up out of here. Uh, every one of us, I've done enough funerals to know uh, that I, you know what, one day I must go the same way. And so I understand that, and, uh, and this motivates me. It should motivate us to think about uh, our spiritual condition and to examine ourselves consistently to examine our spiritual walk on a regular basis somebody say a regular basis you know we get um, we get uh, routine physical checkups don't we yeah, we do or we should uh, we have routine maintenance done on our vehicles somebody says once you reach that 3,000 mark you want to make sure that you have that oil change and and have everything lubricated and all of those things. We do that religiously, no pun intended, but we, re we do that religiously. That is, we get our checkups, we get our annuals, we get our vehicles maintained. And many of us work jobs, some of us work jobs where uh, we have to be recertified. If we're gonna keep the job, we have to be recertified. And so we have to go through a battery of tests and uh, checked out again, somebody said, checked out again. And even if we drive, you know, I received my driver's license when I was 16, but that wasn't the end, because every four years I have to get them renewed. You know, and you do too if you drive here in the state of Alabama. We have to get our driver's license renewed every four years or so. So how often, if we do that, if we do those things, how often do we assess our spiritual walk? How often do you find yourself assessing, that is examining your walk with the Lord? One of the greatest things that you could possess is salvation. Yeah, if you've got salvation, you've got it going on this morning. And I think that we should think about our salvation. We should think about uh, our spiritual condition to make sure, to make sure that we are where the Lord would have us to be. And the church said, Amen. And so uh, I'm moved now, I'm motivated to what? To, to look at myself, to, uh, to assess myself, uh, to look at my behavior, uh, to look at my habits, to look at the, the things that I say, the places I go. Yeah, I've got to look at these things. This is part of thinking about my spiritual condition. Here's the second question I would ask you this morning, and that is this. Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied with your spiritual condition? That is, after you've uh, surmised everything, after you've looked you over, 
And that's what I recommend that we do. Look you over. Don't look me over because I have to look myself over. And truth be told, we, have to, uh, you, we don't have time to look over anybody else really but ourselves. Looking me over is a what? It's a full-time job. So we've got to ask this question. Am I satisfied with what I've seen? That is, once you look at it, once you look at it, and when you take an honest look, because that's how God looks at us, he looks at us honestly. Once we take an honest look at our spiritual conditions, are you satisfied with what you see? Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied with your current spiritual condition? Are you, are you where you should be spiritually? Think about that. Are you where you should be spiritually? Now, we know where we should be. Are you where you should be spiritually? And if you're not, are you okay with that? If you're not where you know you should be spiritually, is that okay? Are you okay with that? Or are you satisfied or just satisfied with um, what I call the outward formalities? <laughs> The outward formalities. What are you talking about, Pastor? Uh, that is looking good. <laughs> Singing good. You know, sometimes we can be satisfied as long as I look good, as long as I shout good, as long as I jump good, as long as I preach good, as long as I teach good, as long as I'm praying good, as long as I'm giving good, as long as I'm in that number that, that has good attendance, I might. I'm all right. No, we, we can't be satisfied with that. In fact, good outward formalities are no good at all if they come from a bad heart. So what I'm talking about, sometimes we can do the right things for the wrong reasons. And by now we know that God judges the heart. God is not really and truly not for real caught up with a lot of exterior formalities. <laughs> And the church said, amen. amen. Are you satisfied with your spiritual condition? Um, now, I didn't ask you if you were satisfied with your singing. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, because in our own eyes, we're always okay. Didn't ask you if you're satisfied with your singing or, or satisfied with your preaching or, or satisfied with the level of success that you're having in your life. Didn't ask you if you're satisfied with being a good provider. See, because anybody can be a good provider. The question becomes not whether you're a good provider, but do you have a good heart? So it's, it's going to go back to the heart. It's going to go back to the heart. Good outward formalities are no good at all if they are not attached to a good heart. The Pharisees, the Pharisees were concerned about doing good for one reason and one reason only, for show. Hmm. They were, the Pharisees were interested in doing good for one reason and that was for show. They wanted everybody to see that they were doing good. They wanted everybody to hear them praying. They wanted everybody to see how much they were dropping in the offering plate. They wanted to see, wanted people to see it was, a, it was an outward thing. And Jesus said, wait a minute. And certainly there's nothing wrong with singing. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with preaching or giving or teaching. There's nothing wrong with coming to church and having good attendance. Nothing wrong with any of those things. But... First, we make, must make sure that our heart, that the heart is right. And so Jesus would, would explain in Matthew, the 23rd chapter, Matthew 23, verses 27 through 28, this is what Jesus would say. Now, let me, let me give a disclaimer, all right? You know, there's some television uh, shows that they'll put a disclaimer. May, uh, say what, baby? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, M may have adult content may use strong language so let me